Hello, friends, and thank you so much for downloading this week's podcast. We are so excited that you're taking time to grow in your faith by listening to these messages. That's our dream in these sermons. We hope that in some small way, they help you in your walk of faith, help you to grow into the person that God yearns for you to be. We also want to encourage you to be part of our social media family. Every day we try to post encouraging messages on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can simply go to these different social media accounts and click on Saint on the Divine and be part of our social media family. And if you don't live in the Jacksonville area and don't have access to a church, we encourage you that every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we broadcast our Divine Liturgy live. You simply have to go to www.stjohnthedivine.com. That's our church website. At 10 o'clock in the morning, click on live broadcast and you can watch our services live. And finally, we're really excited about a brand new internet radio show that we, we have here at Saint of the Divine called Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls. It's broadcast on the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Simply go to ancientfaith.com at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and click on the banner for Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls. We, in this show, we hope that we're kind of merging faith and psychology to kind of give you some practicality in your own walk of faith. So once again, thank you so much for downloading this sermon, and we hope to see you soon at Saint on the Divine. God bless you and stay strong in your faith. Good morning. Hope you guys are doing okay. It's good to see you all in church on this Sunday morning. Um, what I just, real quick, right before we even begin, um, just to kind of give you like a little bit of just some time, a little break, is just look at the person who's right next to you and tell them it's great to see you in church this morning. And to your second thought, the person who's right next to you on the other side, tell them it's great to see you in church this morning. And then look behind you and tell that person, it looks like you can use some church today. <laughs> well, it is, it's so, I'm so excited that you guys are all here in church. It's a great Sunday uh, to be part of our church family. It is going to be a historic day in our community. Um, Y'all all know, you've been seeing the emails, the messages. We've been talking about this for 20 years now, that today I want to share with all of you through our, um, in our meeting right after church, our vision, what your vision is, what you have shared with us all these years, and kind of put it in a way that hopefully will become what is God's vision for all of us in our community. Um, and so I hope that every one of you, I know there's things that you want to do, but hang out with us a little bit. We're going to have a free lunch. You just come and hang out. You observe. You talk. You engage. We want you part of this conversation, but stay afterwards. This is one of those meetings I would tell you to be with us. I want to once again welcome all of you that are also watching us on our live streaming of our Divine Liturgy. If you're one of the thousands of people that, ha that are downloading our Saint on the Divine app, we too are excited that you're with us. If you're watching us on Facebook, Ancient Faith Radio, on our YouTube channel, we want you to know you're part of this church family, so thanks so much for, for joining us this morning. I'm going to dive right into our sermon series. Uh, we'll be getting a brand new one today, and it's called Let's Get Started. And so I want to talk to you today about let's get started today to make the right decisions every day. In two weeks from now, it's really extraordinary, our church, the Orthodox Church all over the world, the second largest church in the world is going to celebrate its New Year's Day, September 1st. It's a day that we know in the traditions of our church that is when Jesus first preached in the temple. That's why we celebrate it, September 1st. First time he preached in the temple. It's also the New Year's of the Byzantine Empire, a time in which our church and state were all one. And just like New Year's Day, September 1st also gives us a time to reflect, to renew our life, to look at things that we need to make changes for in our life, opportunities that we can seek. So also does that September 1st allow us to do the same. Maybe for some of you, as you're thinking about your life right at this very moment, you're thinking, I need to get my finances better in order with what God yearns for me to do in my life. Maybe God is yearning for me to give more of my time and my talent to serving and to helping people. Maybe for some of you, that thing that you might want to work on over the next year might be that I want to get my physical health in order. Or maybe I want to connect better with my spouse or my relationships. Or maybe I need to get rid of some relationships. Whatever it is, 
During this time, God yearns for us today to make the right decisions every day. And one of the right decisions that every one of us can make on a day-to-day -day basis, listen to me, church family, is to make the right decision today to stay hungry for God every day. You know, hunger is an extraordinary thing. When we get hungry, our stomach growls. Maybe some of you, your stomach is growling right about now. I remember when my son George was born. The first thing I noticed, and I told Roxanne, is I said, that boy can eat. He likes to eat. Hunger is one of those things that when we need it, we have to crave it. It's an emptiness that God has created on the inside of us that we need to depend on something else. And just like we can be physically hungry, so also can all of us be emotionally hungry. And many times, if we're not careful, we can depend on that emotional hunger. We can look to find it to be satisfied in all of the wrong places. Maybe sometimes we're trying to feast on some pride. Let me tell everyone what I'm doing good at. Let me make sure everyone knows what I'm doing. Maybe you might be nibbling on some money. Maybe for you, what guides you in your life is not the giver of life, but maybe the power and the money that you desire in your life. And maybe for some of you, you're gorging on just envy, trying to keep up with the Joneses. Whatever it is in your life, you have to understand this important principle. Stop depending on the world to feed you emotionally with what only God can feed you spiritually. Let me say that again. Stop depending on the world to feed you emotionally with what only God can feed you spiritually. You know, I used to be a youth director and a youth pastor of a church in, up, in, up in Boston, and when I was there, I used to do this illustration with the kids, and it might help some of you, and it may not, but um, it's a little egg, and it has all these quarters. Uh, let me just make a quick confession. Uh, George, I stole these quarters from your piggy bank this morning. So. <laughs> but I'll give them back. But I used to tell the kids to come on up and I'd say, all right, now listen, put this egg in the palm of your hand. Close your hand just like this, all right? Now you can't move the, the, uh, your hand. You've got to keep it face down. And, you, and I would say that to them, now try to pick up those quarters. And I said, if you can collect just some of those quarters in 30 seconds, then you'd keep all of that money and you'd get an extra $20. And so all the kids would think, wow, I want to do that. And so they'd start going and they'd start trying to pick up the coins. And no matter how much they tried, even if they got one, eventually they couldn't get the rest of them, especially with their little hands. In the same way is our own life. This egg represents the giver of life, Jesus Christ. You can't hold on to him still trying to connect to the shininess of this world. Because it'll come at you shiny. It'll tell you what you can do, what you can accomplish, how you could feed yourself emotionally. But no matter what you do, you'll never be able to connect to him while also trying to connect to this world. And I want you and me just to make a decision today. That if we're going to make the right decisions today, let me tell it to you this way. That let me make this decision today that I'm not going to allow anything that means absolutely nothing in my earthly life to take me away from the something, my Savior, who means everything in my life. You know, in the Bible, it's powerful. Jesus constantly talks about hungering and thirsting for him. It says this. He says this in the Sermon on the Mount. He's sitting on this mountain. His first sermon that he ever preaches, it's in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. He gets up there and he preaches this sermon outside and he says to the people, Blessed are all of you who hunger and thirst, not for earthly food. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for me, and you will be filled. I love the word blessed. The Greek language is a powerful language that sometimes we underestimate. The Greek language of the word blessed is given one definition in English, but multiple meanings in the Greek you could translate it a number of ways. It's the Greek word makari, and it means blessed, happy, cheerful, multiple words that it can mean. In the same way, happy are those who seek and who are hungry for Christ, who stay hungry every day for Him, 
because they will be filled. In another part of the Bible, Jesus looks at his people. He says, hey, you disciples, and he can really be telling all of us, hey, you saint of the divine church family, listen up. I am the bread of life. Don't try to be fed anywhere else. I am that bread of life, and if you come to me hungry, I will fill you up. But if you're trying to get filled up on that shininess of those quarters in your life, you will never be satisfied. You can't expect the world to sustain you emotionally with what only God could sustain you spiritually. So how do we stay hungry for God? How do we work at that church family? Because no matter what we do in our life, we have got to think that in our life, we are only here for a certain period of time, and then we are gone. And so let us think of some ways together. Let's talk about some ways that we can stay hungry. And I would just submit to all of you that one of them would be that let me, Lord, make a decision today to stay hungry for you every day by doing this, by me getting rid of the distractions in my life. You know, some of the distractions that we think about are our own feelings, unforgiveness, worry, negative thinking, insecurity. But it could also be things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis that we think innocently of. That maybe it's social media. Sometimes we wake up in the morning and we go to bed at night typing on social media. I love social media. We use it in our church. We promote it to share the gospel of Christ, to share our church. But sometimes we spend too much time on it. Maybe sometimes we need to spend more time with Christ than what we're spending on, on social media. Oh, and how we could talk about football now. Oh, how we could talk about football. I love football. I serve as the chaplain of the Jacksonville Sharks, by the way, the arena football national champion, Jacksonville Sharks. But let me tell you something. Sometimes we can spend in a time, we can emotionally exhaust ourselves on a 20-year-old. Sometimes we can look at those athletes and put more passion, more energy in watching a football game than praising and worshiping God. Let's stay hungry for Him. Let me make a decision, God, that I constantly, earnestly seek to put my trust, to put my energy, to give all to you and get rid of those distractions. And sometimes those distractions, friends, to be quite honest with you, it could be your own friends. It could be people that are pushing you and pulling you down the wrong track. Number two, make a decision today that I'm going to stay hungry, that I'm going to maintain and stay hungry to be in the presence of Christ. You know, so often church for us is a Sunday morning event. It is simply we come to church and we just come here as a drop-off. It's one of the events that we do throughout our entire week. We make church... Let me go one step further. We make Christ a part of our life, and he's telling you, I don't want to be part of your life. I want to be the center part of your life. And when you look at our new church facilities, and let me just be honest and open with you, we want a, we want a church that's not just impacting you on a Sunday morning, that's not just impacting you on a Wednesday evening, but that it is impacting you every single day of your life, that every single time you're seeing people being impacted by the love of Christ in this church that we've been fed and we're called to go and feed other people. So let us make that decision that, God, I want to be in your presence. King David says this, I earnestly yearn to be in the house of the Lord and to constantly gaze at the beauty of God. Let's be in his house. Let's constantly make it, not for anyone else, not out of an obligation. God doesn't want an obligation. He wants your heart to be here every single Sunday. And number three, why do we make it a point? Make a decision today to stay hungry by keeping God first. I love the bracelets that we have in our church. We have them in the very far back. If you don't have one, they're totally free. They're just, we give them to you. It says, God first. That God, everything that I want to do is for you. The Bible says, make the most out of every opportunity you've been given. Listen, because the days are evil. The Bible says that the, that the devil, all he wants to do is steal, kill, and destroy you, this church, and everything that comes around it. That is his definition. That's the definition that Jesus gives about the devil. And so let me tell you, make the most of the opportunities that God has put in your life. Stay hungry for him. I'll leave you with this. 
When I was in Boston, it's a funny story, when I was in Boston, two months into my time at the seminary, if you've ever lived away from your home, uh, and especially if you lived in a dorm, um, you know that two things that you're always looking forward to, getting off campus and getting a free meal. And let me tell you something, two months into my time um, at the seminary, I wanted that. Because as a student, you're poor. You don't really have that time to go out to eat. And so whenever someone invites you over for dinner, you are very excited to go because you know that the food is going to be good and it's going to be free. And so we were all about that. So on that Sunday, one of the Sundays that I was there early on in September, one of the people at the church said, Nick, let me tell you something. You need, we're going to invite you. My wife and I want to invite you and some of your friends to come over to our house for dinner, and it's gonna be an amazing dinner. Let me tell you something. My wife is one of the, is an executive chef. She's gonna make a meal that's gonna make you stick your tongue out and slap your face. It is going to be finger licking good. And we were just like, oh my gosh, my mouth started to water, my eyes got big. I was so excited. I was gonna get a free meal. Not only was it gonna be a free meal, it was gonna be like Thanksgiving in September. And so on that Wednesday of that week at church, he's like, Nick, my wife went to the grocery store. She got all those groceries. She's already preparing this great meal that you're going to have on Sunday. You better bring an appetite because we're going to eat. We're going to eat some good food and, and plan to stay even later because we're going to take a nap afterwards. You're only going to be able to move. You're going to eat so much. And here I am going, oh, my gosh, I'm going to eat so good. I'm going to take a doggy back home. So excited, so happy. On Sunday at church, going through the communion line, he was like, Nick, let me tell you something. My wife is going to leave early from church. Don't tell anyone. She's going to leave early from church so that she'd go home and prepare that nice meal for you and your friends. And I'm like going, oh my gosh, this is going to be amazing. We're going to get a nice meal. It's going to be finger looking good. Stick your tongue out, slap your face kind of meal. That's what it was going to be. And so we go there and we go until I knock on the door. He answers the door and I hope that they're not watching us live right now, but um, he goes, uh, so he opens the door and um, he says, come on in. And so we come on in, me and my friends, and we're all in there. And um, about five minutes into it, he's like going, he's like, Nick, can you smell it? And I started to sniff and I couldn't smell anything. And I'm like, uh, and you know, you don't want to be rude. You're around people. It's church people. And we're from the South. You got to be a little bit, you know, we're trying to get some Southern hospitality going. So I'm like, it smells good. I don't know what it is, but it smells good. And he's like, oh, it's good. It's coming. So we go into the, uh, he said, come on, let's go into the dining room because it's, it's already ready. And so we go to the dining room and it's all very formal, very nice, nice forks, nice knives, all that china, great. And then we're sitting down and, and he goes, honey, you got the food ready? She's like, oh yeah, I got it ready. I'm coming out. So she comes out of the doors of the kitchen and she has one platter. And she comes out there and she puts this one platter there. And I'm thinking, this is the appetizer. I'm thinking this is going to be just the appetizer because it is just way too small to be this Thanksgiving meal in September that I'm thinking it's going to be. And he's like, boys, y'all dig in now you're here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dig into what? There was literally, <laughs> let me just tell you, please, I hope you're not watching us right now, but <laughs> it was about five chicken tenders. And let me tell you something, they weren't them Costco chicken tenders. It was like the McDonald's chicken nuggets. It was so small, there were about six carrots, about 20 little mushrooms, and he was like digging, and I'm like going, dig into what? And we were just eating, and let me tell you something, I have never gnawed on a piece of a chicken tender for 30 <laughs> seconds. Everybody was like, mmm, mmm. Mm. Just eating every one of them. I tried to take as much time as I possibly could, and afterwards, you were like, boys, are y'all hungry? Y'all so hungry? We're like, no, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Well, let's go take a nap. And we're like, no, we got to get back to school right now. <laughs> we got back in the car. And I looked at my friends, and they were like, y'all ready to run to the border? And we're like, yep. <laughs> we went to Taco Bell and just feasted on some burritos and tacos. <laughs> and God bless them. I, we thank them for their meal that they offered. It was great. Um, but wow, isn't that sometimes how the world is? And maybe so on Sundays, you're hearing, come on, I got a good meal of pride for you. And maybe on Wednesdays, it's like, come on, you can feast on just some jealousy a little bit. And maybe on Friday, come on, you can entertain a little bit of just power hungry. That maybe sometimes we'll get that same kind of message. And what I want you to encourage you is that don't depend on the world to sustain you with what only God can feed you spiritually. And I want you to make a decision that, God, I'm going to make a decision today to stay hungry for you every day. By doing what? But I'm going to keep you first in my life. That you don't want to be an afterthought. You are my first thought. 
that I'm going to make a decision to get rid of all of the distractions that are in my life, that I'm going to make a decision today to stay hungry for you every day by being in the presence of Christ every day. Because I want to make a decision that I'm not going to allow anything that means absolutely nothing in my earthly life to keep me from the something, my Savior, who means everything in my eternal life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.